Good morning, everyone. The start of this video is taking place about half an hour after the end of the previous video. In the previous video, I finally was able to free my car from the mud after spending 39 hours trapped there in the mud. And so I'm celebrating this morning with uh, some pastries, some baked goods from a local bakery. Got a blueberry scone here and a, a cronut of some sort. Pretty tasty. I'm just outside of the town of Thermopolis, Wyoming, and uh, I'm at a, a trailhead for a little hike that I wanted to do before I head into the town and show you some things there. So let me enjoy my, my pastries here and then we'll hit the trail. I'm parked at the edge of town, kind of above town, I wanted to come up here for two reasons. The first was to get a, a better view of the town itself. This is something I always like doing. I always like getting above cities and towns and getting a nice overview, sort of a, a bird's eye view. This is Thermopolis, Wyoming. Nice little town. And then the second reason I'm here is to go on a hike up this thing. This little mountain is called Round Top, and it's called that because the top of it is a circle, basically. Like, if you look at it on Google Maps, on the satellite view, it's a perfectly round little summit up there. And uh, I found this just by, again, looking at Google Maps. I uh, don't really know how long it should take, but it's a pretty small, pretty small little, uh, little hill here, so it shouldn't be too bad, it shouldn't take too long. trail goes through this little cliff band near the top, and I'm almost through it. I'm almost at the top here. Yeah, here we are. The top is flat and wide open. Let's go to the actual tippy top of the mountain over here. Beautiful. Totally worth the little hike to get up here. It took 10 or 15 minutes to get up here. And uh, the best view is from the edge of the top and not from the top itself. I mean, you have to go to the top just to say that you've done it, that you've conquered the mighty peak. But the best views are from these, uh, these rock slabs over here. And if the weather were clear, we'd be able to see several mountain ranges. The Bighorns would be over here. And then to the west would be the the Wind River Range, off in this direction. And to the north, the Absorcas, over this way. But even as is, with the cloud cover, you really just want a view of this down here, of the town, of Thermopolis itself. And for that, this hike definitely delivered, even in the bad weather. And you can see another little mountain over here, this little red thing. And that is kind of a, an important local landmark for the town. This town is known for something. And the key is in the name, Thermopolis. If you're up on your Greek, I think it is, then you'll know what that means, and I'll tell you in a second. But uh, I'm gonna hike back down to the car first. I can see the parking lot. I'm still the only one here, which is pretty neat. But yeah, I'll, I'll uh, hike back down to the car, then we'll drive over to what this town is known for. And I think we'll be able to explain it better once we get a better view of that mountain. Okay, so the mountain that I pointed to from on top of round top was this mountain. The one that I wanted to point to was actually this one in front of me. And this mountain that is clearly visible from the, the highway that runs through town says, world's largest mineral hot spring. And there are some helpful arrows pointing to this place. This is Hot Springs State Park. This is what Thermopolis is known for. Thermopolis in Greek means hot city, thermo like thermonuclear or thermometer, and opolis like metropolis. 
Look at this thing. You can see some people over there for scale. This is the Bighorn River. And this is just a sheet of, uh, of calcite, I think. Just mineral deposits from who knows how many thousands of years. There's a boardwalk on top of this. And I think, oh, I was gonna say that's a, that's a person right there, but that's actually a sign. Really neat. So this park is, I, I think it's free. I think it's a free state park. And there are a bunch of little springs that we're gonna visit. This is sort of like a, a Yellowstone. You know, there's, there are boardwalks and rock formations and flowing water and steam. And there are actual hot springs that you can like go and soak in, but they're developed. I think this is one of them, this little dome-shaped building. There are uh, a couple others in the park. We're gonna bypass those and just visit the more natural sites, like this thing. This place, this state park, is a network of trails and parking areas, and there's even a little uh, viewing area or observation deck above this spring that is called Big Spring. And here it is, it is bubbling and boiling and roiling. That's really cool. It's quite deep over here. I mean, that's got to be like 20 feet deep over here. Very clear water. The Native Americans used to come here to the, the hot springs and they called these places uh, smoking water or medicine water. This pool flows over here. It has a little, uh, little creek that drains it. And the next spring, I think, is over here somewhere. There aren't too many people here. There were a bunch of cars at one of the soaking pools, which was like an outdoor, uh, like an outdoor heated swimming pool sort of place. And we saw a bunch of people from that viewpoint earlier uh, fishing along the river, but here, not a whole lot going on. This one is called Black Sulphur Spring. Let's see if we can get a closer look. Definitely smells like sulphur, it smells like rotten eggs. And I don't know if you guys can, guys can see it in the camera, but it is steaming a little bit here. Looks like there might be some water down in the depths of the cave. That, this is crazy, this is like 30 feet deep. A sign uh, that I read at the other spring said that a Shoshone chief named Chief Washaki carved out a soaking pool uh, out of the travertine, out of the, the rock uh, near this area. Uh, I don't think that is marked anywhere here, but that's, that's pretty cool. I think this is the koi pond over here. I can see some flashes of orange in the water. Oh yeah. don't have any food to give them. Well, I guess I have some bread, but I don't know how good bread is for carp or for, uh, for koi. Yeah, there are hundreds of, of koi in here. Looks like they're trained to go toward people. I'm sure they're used to people feeding them. And I would if I had food. I just don't know. Like, I don't have any fish pellets or anything. I wish there was a, a, uh, like a vending machine here. Sometimes places like this have vending machines of little fish food pellets you can buy. And then over here where all this steam is, that's where we're going next. And this is the spot that I, uh, that we could see clearly from across the river. It's called the Rainbow Terrace. It was that, uh, a kind of fossilized waterfall of, of multicolored rock.
this place is pretty interesting to me. There's this unique juxtaposition between these really remarkable uh, formations, these natural wonders, and this kind of carnival water slide atmosphere over here. And uh, I, I think these things, these, these travertine terraces, are formed when, when water picks up uh, various minerals underground, then it comes to the surface and the water cools, and then as it cools it deposits the minerals in, in formations like this. Very odd, very interesting, very unique place. Uh, I'm going to backtrack a little bit, go back over this way to uh, the river, or to the, the bridge that crosses the river. There's a little suspension bridge, a little footbridge over there. And I think we'll be able to have a better view of this area, this, uh, these rainbow terraces along the riverbank. This really is remarkable, this rainbow terrace. This is the, the best thing in the park. Both of the view from here and looking at it from here and then being on that boardwalk up there and getting a little bit closer to the terraces. And it's still active, like it's still dripping water. You can see little waterfalls all over it. There are these little little alcoves where water is just running down. That is, that is fantastic. And then here's the bridge. And uh, the, the mountain that says world's largest mineral hot spring. I think that's referring to one of the springs at the, at one of the pools. One of those swimming pool, soaking pool places. You look at something like this and you think, man, how many thousands, millions of years did it take for this to form? It is just nature's handiwork at its finest. These types of formations, these travertine terraces, are fairly rare, but uh, I'm obviously reminded of the ones in Yellowstone, uh, all around Yellowstone, but especially at Mammoth Terraces. There's a famous place in Turkey that I don't remember the name of, uh, but I'll put a picture of, the, of it on the screen if I can find it. A very similar sort of thing. And uh, yeah, really, really neat. Uh, there is one more sort of geothermal rock geology thing that I want to see here in the park and show you guys. And then another uh, non-geothermal thing to show you after that. Oh, and walking back to the car here, I realized that there are some little uh, little vending machines for fish food by the koi pond, but they look, I mean, there's a little bit left in there, but they're, they're basically empty. Anyway, good to know for future reference. This thing is called Teepee Rock, and it's probably the best known symbol of the park. Like if you search for Thermopolis Hot Springs or Hot Springs State Park, then uh, you'll see a lot of pictures of this guy. Isn't that just wild? And it's still steaming. Let's go get a closer look. I think I called it Teepee Rock, but it's actually called Teepee Fountain, and I didn't know that it was man-made. This is what it looked like originally, uh, a pyramid or a cone of rocks. And it says here that the teepee fountain was built in 1909 to vent steam from hot mineral water. As water flows over the structure, it cools and deposits layer upon layer of travertine. The process is similar to the formation of terraces seen throughout the park. It's pretty amazing that this happened in just over 100 years. That's a lot of buildup compared to what it used to look like. Okay, I lied. There were a couple other natural rock formations that I wanted to see here that I forgot about. I'm at one of them now. This place is called White Sulphur Spring. I don't know if this is the actual spring or if it's over here. We'll go check out over there in a minute, but either way, this thing is really weird. This thing is bizarre. Very weird. I've never seen anything like this. These layers remind me of, uh, what are those candies called? Gobstoppers? Everlasting gobstoppers or something like that? It's like layer upon layer of a hard candy shell. That's what it looks like. 
Or maybe I'm thinking of jawbreakers, like those jawbreakers that are this big around. That's what this looks like. That's what this reminds me of. Or like a, I don't know, like an alien egg. That's what this could be. Who knows? An alien escape pod fossilized. Pretty crazy. Each layer is a few inches thick. What a weird thing. <laughs> I love it. Adjacent to the alien egg, which is right there, is this thing. It's a little path that leads down to the river to White Sulphur Spring. A bathhouse and a dance pavilion were built here in 1890, but they were destroyed by fire in 1899. Didn't last too long. There's not a whole lot here, just a little trickle coming out of a gash. A little hole in the rock in the cliff. It's about a foot across and uh, it's steaming. So this is hot water leading out into the river. Just flows right into the, the Bighorn River, which is very brown and muddy today from all the rains we've been having in this area. It's weird to me that of all the things in this park that have those little interpretive signs like this, like this one for White Sulphur Spring, there isn't one for the alien egg. So I have no idea what that is, why it looks like that, how it was formed. I assume it was formed in the same way as everything else around here that, you know, minerals in the water formed that as the water evaporated or whatever, but I don't know. I don't know why that thing in particular is like that. I don't know what I'm going to do now other than that I'm going to drive north. I have about an hour and a half, maybe a couple hours of driving yet, depending on where exactly I'm going to go. I need to do some trip planning. I need to figure out where I want to be today and where I want to be tomorrow in the next couple of days. So let me figure that out. Let me do some driving and I'll meet back up with you guys somewhere either at a campsite or another point of interest. I don't know. Stay tuned and we'll find out together. <laughs> have left the high desert behind, that brown and red and gray desert, and now we are in winter in Alpine territory. This highway that I've been driving is Highway 14, and what I think is the highest point on the highway, or at least one of them, uh, it's a pass called Granite Pass, is just over there, and that's at about 9,000 feet. So here I am just under 9,000 feet. We have a little bit of blue sky poking up and some fairly high peaks off in the distance. Nearly all of the snow was deposited in the last couple of days in the same storm that trapped me in my car. There's a ski resort of some sort that I passed over here. I don't know what that was, what it was called, but I think there was a ski resort over there. I was toying with the idea of camping up here, but I mean, all the dirt roads are covered in a foot of snow now, and so it'll just be easier to find a campsite back in the high desert, several thousand feet below. So uh, I just basically wanted to come up here and get a taste of the upcoming winter. And uh, I like the Bighorn Mountains. This is a mountain range that, uh, that I haven't explored too much. I've made a few videos here. I've been here a couple of times, but I haven't been here as much as I probably should, given that I live in Wyoming. So uh, anyway, just wanted to go for a scenic drive and bring you guys along with me. I'm gonna head back down the mountain now, back to the desert, back to the lowlands, and hopefully I can find a dry <laughs> campsite on some BLM land somewhere down there.
Welcome to camp. This is a pretty cool campsite. I mean, the spot itself is is fine. I'm just kind of pulled over on the side of a dirt road, but the views are so cool. Got these awesome multicolored Badlands formations. Like, look at the, the colors over here. Being lit up by the setting sun. And then over here, we can see the mountains. We were just up here about an hour ago in the snow. Good place to call home for the night. And I think that'll wrap it up, guys. I'm gonna relax for the rest of the night, but I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think. Let me know what your favorite part was. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll see you in the next one. Be sure to check out Adventure Know How, my new site, where you can gain access to a map of all of my free campsites, plus monthly bonus videos that you won't find anywhere else. Learn more at adventureknowhow.com. And for links to everything else SUV RVing related, visit suvrving.com. Links to these sites and more will be in the video description.